Hi, my name is Becky Sautner, and these are videos from my practicum. They include videos from North Point Elementary, Space Center Intermediate, and Clear Lake High School. Enjoy! This morning I'm reshelving books. We had two full carts of books this morning, and I'm now on the very last one, so I'm putting this on the shelf here and finishing up. It's been a busy morning here in the library. Hi, we just got our box of book fair stuff. So we just opened it up. We've got book fair coming up here in a few weeks. So I'm just going through the box and planning out um, some kind of bulletin board to put out in the hallway to help promote book fair for our students and parents and teachers. This is a video I created for World Read Aloud Day which is February 1st. Our school is going to be listening to all of these authors read their books virtually to help celebrate World Read Aloud Day. Um, we get books from the Junior Library Guild and we use those for birthday books. And we got a book right here that we're interested in exchanging. And so Miss May is having me select a book so I found a title that I was interested in called Did You Take the Bee from My Ook? And first I'm checking in the card catalog just to make sure that the school doesn't already have it, which they don't. Um, I'm also going to check, Miss May had recommended that I check in um, Tidal Wave to get more in-depth reviews than what we get on Junior Library Guild. And so I've looked at the reviews here on Tidal Wave, and there's two of them, Kirkus Review and Publishers Weekly. And it sounds like this is a pretty good book and one we can exchange. This one, exchange this one, and order the Did You Take the Bee from My Ook. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out the form here for Junior Library Guild and trade this book out and get this book on order for our library. Hi Olivia. Hi. Um, what kind of book are you looking for today? I'm looking for a cat book. You're looking for a book about cats? Mm -hmm. um, what kind of cats are you looking for? Like cats that are pets or cats that are like big cats like lions cats and like tigers? Cats like pets. Cats like pets. Okay. Um, do you know where the cat books are? Right here? Okay, do you see anything that looks interesting to you? This one. What's that one called? Dewey? You want that one? Yeah. Okay, let's go check your book out. Okay. Can I do it? Well, we'll get ready to check out your book. Okay, Olivia, you can go ahead and check out your book. Okay, and now it shows that Dewey, there's a cat in the library, has been checked out to you. Bye, Olivia. Bye. Hi, Olivia. Hi. You look like you're a little bit stuck trying to find a book. Yeah. Have you found a good one yet? No. Um, what, what do you like to read about? Pig the Pug. You want a book about Pig the Pug? Hmm. Why do you like those books? Because I had a book that was called Pig the Elf. Oh, Pig the Elf? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I actually know where the Pig the Pug books are, I think. You want to come over here and let's see if we can find one? Okay. Okay. Looks like we have two in right now. We've got Pug Meets Pig and Pug and pig trick or treat. Oh, pug and pig trick or treat. That sounds like a good one. <laughs> I 
What do you think? Does that look like a good one? Yeah. Is that what you were looking for? Yeah. Okay, let's go check it out. Okay. We just got these books in from another school and they are fulfilling an interlibrary loan that two of our teachers have requested. So I'm coming onto the computer and I'm checking this out to the teacher. And I'm gonna go ahead and say yes here. And it now shows that Tacky the Penguin um, has been checked out to this teacher. Okay, so I need to go ahead um, and do the other in our library for the I other like choice days. That, that way you're going to read your fun. Read what you want. Well, okay. Seniors Resolution, which is another one that's been sent from another school. So I'm going to click on this teacher's account and go down, scroll down to the bottom. Where you listed for an ILL. into BrazCon this morning. Um, I'm an adult volunteer here and this is like a comic con for teens with graphic novels. We just got another box of book fair stuff and I'm taking this stuff out of the box. We're going to use this stuff to help create a bulletin board. Okay, we just got a box from Scholastic. This is our book fair promo kit. We're gonna be using the things in this box to create an interactive bulletin board to go outside the, the book fair. So we've got some photo props. We're gonna set up a photo booth outside for fit night for parents and students and staff to take pictures and post on social media. Got some hats. See what else is in this box. Got some more signs that we can hang up around the school to help promote the book fair. And looks like we've got a tablecloth that we can use as decoration. This box is full of stuff. A little banner for the book fair. This year the theme is pause for reading, so it's a lot of pet themes. Decorations. And we've got one large box here. We'll have to see what's in that box in just a minute. And we've got some decorations for the tables to make table stand decorations. So we're going to start setting some of this up here pretty soon. We're going to get the bulletin board going probably later this afternoon so that we can start promoting our book fair, which begins in two weeks. Today we have maker space in the library. We've got first grade. We've got building a marble tunnel. And over here, we've got an activity with cover where we use the iPad to make the pictures come alive. We're making some bookmarks. This is kindergarten, and they are in the space, so today I'm helping um, the kindergartners with their maker space activity. The shiny glare. And here's the quiver with the picture for one of our maker space activities. Makes their pictures come to life. <coughs> this is one of our kindergartners that's down there. He's able to press the airplane button at the bottom and make his airplane fly in his color. This is a book display I made to promote World Read Aloud Day. Our school Skyped with 19 authors on February 1st. And we ordered a bunch of books from these authors and I set up this display in the library to get, help get the kids excited about World Read Aloud Day and also show them where the books are in our library so they can check them out. Okay, we're here in our first grade book club this morning. And today we were reading Pete the Cat books. And so we read one together and everyone's writing about their favorite part. And they're all gonna take a different Pete the Cat book home with them and bring it back Thursday. And we're gonna do a different kind of reader response. 
So we're going to come over here. Anna, what was your favorite part? It was when he found out that he had a belly button and then he said it's all good. Okay. Elise, what was your favorite part? When we did, when he found his belly button and he said it was all good. Yes. Olivia, what was your favorite part? When he still had his belly button. What was your favorite part, Saad? Pizza Cat said, my belly button still has my belly button. My belly button. My belly button. Still have my belly button. <laughs> what about you, Christopher? What part my did you like the best? My favorite part was when he found his belly button. It was when he found his belly button. And last week we read an elephant and piggy book, and they all took home a different one, and we did a reader response for that book where they had to give the book a rating and determine whether or not they would recommend their book to a friend or not. So... Christopher, did you like the, what was the name of the book you read? Listen to my trumpet. And did you like your book? Yes. Yes? Saad, what was the name of your book the you thank read? Thank you book. The thank you book. And would you recommend that to a friend? Uh, yes. Yes? And Olivia, what was your book called? Um, it was called We Are In A Book. Okay, did you say you would recommend that to a friend? Elise, do you remember the book you read last time? Happy Pig Day. Happy Pig Day. Would you recommend that one? No. No? Not your favorite, huh? No. That's okay. We don't always like the books we read. And what about you, Anna? What did you pick? Um, what was the title of the book? Yes, the title of the book. Um, mm -hmm. Can I play too? And would you um, recommend that one to a friend? Yes. Okay. All right. Very good, guys. And I know you're all looking forward to taking home your Pete the Cat books and bringing them back Thursday so that we can talk about them with a snack and chat. Okay, I noticed um, when I was walking around that mm -hmm. you had genrefied your fiction section. Yes. What, why did you decide to do that? What? So the librarian this before me, she was very up on um, current goings on, uh, going on, going on, thank you, in the library. And so she actually did it before I even got here. Um, and she was one of the first in our district, and now it's standard practice for intermediate and high school to be genrefied. But there are lots of different ways that they're genrefying. So some schools, um, they simply label their books, but they're still in alphabetical order by author, so they're not sectioned. Uh -huh. um, I prefer this. If you're going to have genre, to go ahead and have here's your historical fiction section, your sports fiction section, that kind of thing. It helps kids who really struggle with finding what they like. Then they they kind of get their niche and they're like, okay, this is where I'm going to be, you know. Um, however, in that same way, it can be limiting, you know, because they think, oh, I only like science fiction or I don't like science fiction. I'm not going over right. there. And so you kind of have to, I talk about cross genrefication a lot. Um, and the other option you can do too is like if your book is a mystery and a historical fiction and it's a Lone Star book, for instance, we buy two and you put one in historical and one in mystery. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, to say, well, yeah, it's, it's historical, but it's also a really great mystery. And so when they're looking for realistic fiction, I remind them, you know, you have really great realistic fiction in history, in sports, in, um, in the realist edition section, can you pause that? Um, I mine mine's in sections like I mentioned. However, see how I have the Dimco dots. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend not doing an extra sticker like that. They have um, color overlays that you can do. Right. Um, I would highly recommend that. It's going to save you money over time because uh, you're only applying one uh, sticker. With this, I have to use at least two stickers to adequately cover it, plus the Dimco sticker. Um, Fallette will, you can give them your requirements and they will do it for you there. And when it gets sent to you, it's ready to go out on the shelf, which is definitely worth it. Right. And I purchase from Fallette almost exclusively because they do that. There are a couple other vendors that are willing to do the genrefication for you. Um, like Junior Library Guild does not, and I've told them, I said, if you did that, I would purchase from you, but I'm not going to purchase from you if you're not going to 
have it genreified so I can put it out on the shelf when I receive my order. Um, but I, I personally, I like genrefication. I think it's um, a great way to kind of break up the books because mm -hmm. when you have a couple thousand books, it's a lot to look at. And a lot of times, you know, kids don't know who their favorite authors are, so they just roam about. And when they can roam a little more exclusively in an area, I think it's easier for them to find something that right. they like. This morning I'm in Space Center Intermediate, and it is standard practice for a school district to have the intermediate, the high schools, fiction sections genreified. Um, the librarian, Ms. Burroughs, told me she created these signs this summer so that the color on the sign corresponds with the dot on the book. So here's the mystery section and these books have pink dots. We have graphic novels for here. Back over in this section we have realistic fiction. And all the books have pink dots on them to correspond with the pink on the sign. We have humor, and the sign also corresponds with the dots on the books. So, as Ms. Burroughs told me this morning, it is standard practice in our district for intermediate and high school schools to have um, the fiction section genre five. We're watching some book trailers and doing some book talks to help learn. Okay, we're here at Space Center Intermediate, and Ms. Burroughs and I, the librarian, are talking about her flexible scheduling. So when I started, they had fixed scheduling, mm -hmm. and I sent out an email, um, my like my first week here, to the ELA teachers, and I said, I understand that y'all have had fixed scheduling, and I want to talk to you about the benefits of flexible scheduling, and I put a chart. Or I said the benefits of different types of scheduling. So I put a chart on there that showed the benefits and the drawbacks to flexible and fixed and then a flex fix schedule as well. And um, which basically made them see that you need to have a flex schedule, okay? Right. Uh, otherwise, you're just constantly like, oh, y'all come on in and you know what I mean? Like they're not excited about books. They're not picking out books based on what they're doing in their curriculum. They're just getting books, which kids need to have books, but there are opportunities before school, during lunch, and after school every single day to check out a book. Okay. okay? Um, so my schedule is very, very flexible. And I tell, like, you, you could call me today and say, hey, can I get in? And I'll check my schedule and be like, yeah, I can get you in. You know, we can come at the beginning of the period. You can come at the end of the period. What, you know, whatever. Especially if it's just check in and check out. Um, because I do flexible scheduling, I can meet with people from every different curriculum, every different subject. So, like yesterday, I had the Clear Creek counselors. They needed the space. And, of course, the library, it's important that we are available for all stakeholders, which would include, you know, having people meet in here for PTA, which they did last night for the counselors yesterday morning, you know. So I scheduled first and second period for counselors. But then I had another teacher, I went ahead and scheduled her fourth, fifth, and sixth because she popped in yesterday and said, is there any way? And I said, yeah, absolutely, I can get you in there. I had Miss Brand's class come in fourth and sixth at the end of the period. Casper was at the beginning of the period. And then we had, we had a Spanish meeting in the library at 4.15, and then we had a PTA meeting at 6.30. Wow. <laughs> so that was just yesterday. Um, today I'm marked, you know, that you're here. I'm covering historical fiction. Initially it was just Miss Francis, Miss Hawk called and said, hey, I heard Miss Francis is doing historical fiction. Can I get in? I said, absolutely, love to have you. Um, so that added two, three, four, six, and eighth period, which also indicates 
See, I don't have a fifth here and there's not a fifth there. That will be my one period during the day where I can do anything else. I do not have an off period and I don't, I specifically do that so that I can meet all of my students at all times. Okay. okay. And that way I can also have two or three classes in the library rotating. Okay. And then, um, let's see, book talks, talk about the norms of the genre. Those are just my notes, but this is who's coming in today. Um, Tomorrow, I have Beckworth at the end of the period, Brand first and second because she's making up for what she couldn't get in on Monday. And then Miss Armitage, I'm talking historical fiction with her classes. She's coming in the first of the period, first period because I already had booked Brand, but she wanted to fit in. So she's gonna do first half of the period and then, or second half of the period on first and then first half of the period on these. And I'm just gonna do a quick book talk. So I'll, I'll book talk three or four books and then let them pick books because they don't have the full period. So it is truly a flexible Absolutely. schedule. Absolutely. I mean, I totally mean, open is what you're telling yes. me. Yes. And the teachers love it. They, I mean, they're they love it. They, what they, okay, so of course some teachers wanna be like, oh, we have library on Friday, right? Because then right, you're right. not, you don't have to do anything every other Friday. They just come in and they, you know, we're getting books and whatever. But with this, I also like Miss Flores, for instance, she wanted to schedule last week. And the way that she worded her email, I said, uh, do you plan to be here that day? And she's like, no, I'm gonna have a sub. And I said, well, I'm not gonna teach research to your class without you here. Right. Right, because what you want is for me to be your sub. So that's not gonna happen. But I'm willing, I'm more than willing. So she said, well, send the kids and they can find books on youth violence. Well, I'm not gonna have 25, 30 books on youth violence. So I scheduled her for Thursday. We're gonna do research. We're teaching research. I'm teaching citation in research, in the process, and then I'm gonna help start the writing process because I was an English teacher also, right? So I can do all of these, but they're gonna be at the point of need rather than just like, oh, we'll teach research today, I'll teach you citation, but you're not actually gonna use it till next week. Okay. Okay, otherwise, the teacher wouldn't know what I'm doing, she wouldn't know what I've taught, and then the kids, when they go back to class and they say, how did you do that citation? She's like, oh, I don't know, we'll talk to Miss Burroughs. Right, so it's really all about kind of collaborating with yourself and Absolutely. the teachers. Absolutely, yeah. And this is working and, really well. And the flexible scheduling, they love because they think, they're like, oh my God, she's so accommodating. And I am, I am extraordinarily accommodating. But it also allows for a schedule where I can say, okay, I can block off Friday because, see, this is a math person I have coming in, which is great. Miss Beckworth saw that I was doing historical fiction, so now she wants to come do that. I've booked myself into the lab on this day, so there there can be classes in here with my assistants, but I'll be in the lab teaching research. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for talk, talking yeah. to me about that. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, I'm at Space Center Intermediate, and we've printed out the list of interlibrary requests that need to be filled by our school. So I am pulling some of the books to get them ready so that we can send them off to the other intermediate schools that were requesting them. So the first one I'm starting with is artillery. And here it is. So I'm gonna pull this one off the shelf. And this one is actually going to League City, Element League City Elementary School. And then I'm looking for the Lost Boy. So that's in the 921 section. So I'm walking over here to find the Lost Boy. And that is 921 PEL. B H. And here we are in the 921 PEL, and I have located the book, The Lost Boy, which is going to Clear Creek High School. And the last one I'm looking for is The Human Body, which is a call number 612 PAR for Ferguson Elementary. So I'm going to 612 PAR be over this way.
And here we are in 612. Now we're looking for PAR. And our book is The Human Body, which I have located here. So now I'm going to take the list. And I'm going to go label these books with a post it to the school where they need to be sent to. So I'm walking back over to the circulation desk. So the first book, Artillery, is going to League City Elementary School. I was just looking, I went to the um, first came off the ER vest, I saw that. Like crossed off. And then do Star Island. And I'm gonna take this post-it where I wrote Leak City Elementary and I'm putting that on artillery. The last boy um, is going to Clear Creek High schedule. School. And then he can continue work out this tomorrow. Oh, is that white? No. Okay. I couldn't so find I'm going to get this yeah, posted We're not supposed to go for like Clear Creek High mistake. School. For hiding them. For and hiding. the last one, The That's Human all. Body, like, is going to Ferguson it's Elementary. Okay, so I have pulled the books that were requested from our school. And I'm going to get these into the computer system here in a few minutes to get them ready to go. I am at Space Center Intermediate and I'm working on the next step to getting these books over here ready to be sent out to other schools. All of these books are on request through Interlibrary Loan. So I printed um, the requests. And I've gone through and I've pulled all the books off the shelves that were ready. And now I am going to be filling out one of these slips for each book that shows the student's name and the school where they're at. So we can get these prepped up to be put in the green packets to be sent to the other schools. So the first one here is artillery. And when I'm looking at my print out here. I see that artillery is going to be for Gerardo Miguel Ramos. So I'm going to write his no name. And the school for this one is going to be League City Elementary School. So here I'm going to write League City Elementary School. And I've got the book Artillery that he has requested. And I'm going to take the interli interlibrary loan slip and tape it to the cover of the book. And this book is ready for me to put it into the automation system and get ready to be sent off to Leak City Elementary. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to finish the rest of this stack. My next book is ER Vets and I know from my printout that it is for Gloria Miller at Whitcomb Elementary School. So I'm going to get a slip ready and fill it out again and tape it to the cover of the book. And I'm going to repeat this process for all of these books that we have ready to be sent out. Hi, I'm at Space Center Intermediate School, and these are books that have been turned in that were severely damaged. For example, right here of this copy, Bud Not Buddy. These are books that are just falling apart, and we just kind of feel like that they were beyond repair. So we went into Paulette, into our catalog, and updated the copies, and deleted these copies from our catalog. 
we also decided to check the history of these books and see, you know, when was the last time they were checked out and how many times they had been checked out. And we used these statistics to help us determine whether or not to reorder an additional copy of this book. For example, the book The Exile Queen, when we looked up the history of this book, we noticed that it had been checked out several times and was a very popular book. And so we decided to go on into Tidal Wave and we ordered a new copy of this book to be put in our library. So again, these are books that were beyond repair and we weeded them from the library and removed them from our card catalog. And we kind of checked the history of the book to see how often they've been checked out and if they were popular books. And if they were a book that was really popular with the students, we looked to see how many copies we had in the library and we used those statistics to determine whether or not we needed to order an additional copy of the book to replace the damaged one. I'm here at Space Center Inter Intermediate. I've been doing some work at the circulation desk today. Um, here at Space Center Intermediate, the students come and put in their pin number in the little um, pin pad here. It brings up their information on a monitor that they're able to see. And a student library aide checks in their books for them. And these library aides also check out books, they renew books, and they um, are able to accept fine payments for students. Whenever a book is checked out here, they scan it. And they also use a date stamp here and stamp the date into the book just as a visual reminder for students so they can remember when their book is due. I'm back here at Space Center Intermediate and then this morning we're working with a special needs class who is doing research on youth violence. And so what we've decided to do is um, take this project and kind of divide it up. It's a five paragraph research paper. And so each paragraph is a specific thing regarding youth violence. And so we've um, come up with some accommodations to help these kiddos by tackling one paragraph at a time. We've also shown them the databases that are available to them and kind of help guide them to two specific databases to use that will help this research. And we've shown them how to bookmark these databases so that they will be easily accessible to them tomorrow and for the next week whenever they continue writing this paper. Um, we made another additional accommodation this morning by choosing some articles and reading them out loud together and then going through the article afterwards and discussing it and kind of finding the key points and having the students take notes on the article and then cite the article. We've talked about plagiarism and we've also showed them an easy way to use the database in order to help um, cite their sources. We've been talking about using the information we find online ethically, making sure we don't plagiarize, so we're not using the exact phrasing, and also um, doing the um, citations. And you can see through here that we've got the databases pulled up on a large projector and each student has an individual laptop. And I'm recording this video from the office just to protect the privacy of the students to make sure that I don't have any faces or direct faces in this video. So again, this is a special needs class here at Space Center Intermediate that's working on a research project on youth violence. We've collaborated with the teacher in order to determine how to best do this. And we've also kind of made some decisions this morning as we've been working on it. We've made some additional accommodations and little tweaks to what we originally planned um, as issues have come up this morning in order to best meet the needs of the students. Hi, I've been making some um, book fair promotion materials. 
Our book fair is going to be opening on February 19th. And I'm in charge of the teacher preview, which is going to be on Thursday, February 15th from 3.30 to 4.30. So I've been making some advertisement for that to motivate the teachers to come. I've also kind of started working on their invitation to the book fair preview, which are going to be these doggy bags filled with pup corn, since the theme this year is pause for reading. I've created a sign to count down to the book fair, and we're going to be taking a picture of this sign daily and posting it on our school's social media accounts, as well as having it prominently displayed in the school in order to help build excitement about the book fair. I'm also working on a bulletin board at school, so I printed some of the materials from the book fair chairperson's kit, and I've also purchased um, some additional decorative materials. We're going to be using these paw prints to line the hallway to lead the way to book fair. And I've been going on to Tidal Wave to print out book covers for books that are going to be at the book fair that the kids are excited about in order to use these books for our bulletin board to help generate sales and get kids and teachers and the community excited about our book fair. Um, as part of my professional development, I've continued to be a member of the Texas Library Association, and here's an email showing my membership renewal. I also have registered to attend the TLA Annual Conference in Dallas in April, so this is going to be a big portion of my professional development as far as a librarian this semester, and I'm really excited to go to TLA. I've heard a lot of really great things from the librarians I've been working with this semester and I can't wait to go and learn all the different things about being a librarian and different resources I can use for whenever I have my own library. This is the bulletin board that I created to promote book fair. This bulletin board's hanging outside of the library in the main hallway of the school. Our book fair is starting on February 19th but I wanted to go ahead and get this hanging up in order to help promote the book fair and get the kids and the staff and the community excited about our book fair. I used the Scholastic Flyer that was going home to um, find titles that were going to be featured in the book fair. So I pulled a bunch of titles that I know kids are excited about and like to check out from the library. And then I logged on to Tidal Wave and used Tidal Wave to print book covers so that I could use these to display on the bulletin board. And the theme of the book fair this spring is pause for reading. So I used some of the um, supplies that were available in the chairperson's kit, like these kitties, and used them to help decorate the bulletin board. Um, I'm in here passing out the teacher invitations to our book fair preview. Got the sign here up in the lounge. And I'm at the teacher mailboxes. Let me pick one up. I'm going to put one in everybody's box to invite them to our teacher preview on Thursday. We're going to have some door prizes and some fun snacks so the teachers can come and preview our book fair. So, got a whole bag here. And I'm going to put one in each box. Here's our book fair countdown sign that I created. I'm getting ready to change it because my book fair is now six days away and we've been taking a picture of this every day and posting it on our school social media accounts to help promote the book fair. We also have this display in a prominent spot in our hallway in order to help get the kids and the staff and the parents excited about book fair. So I am putting up number six because our book fair is now six days away. I've just been working on some more prep for our book fair interactive bulletin board. We're going to have this bulletin board out for fit night, which is our school's fit body and mind night, which is a combination of uh, PE night, literacy night, math night, and we invite the community. And our book fair is going to be open then. And I've created a picture frame so that they can use this along with our cat and dog and fish props to take pictures in front of our bulletin board and post these on social media and get the word out about our book fair. 
I'm here at North Point Elementary and I am pulling books for holds that students have placed holds on at our school. Um, I'm working on the top one here, the Tarantula Scientist, which I have located right here to go ahead and pull for this student. I'm going to add it to the other books that I've pulled and I will be labeling these books for the students who requested a hold and placing these in the teacher's boxes so that these can get into the hands of students as soon as possible. Okay, I've pulled all the books for the holds and now I'm going in and putting um, the patron's name so that I can find out who their teacher is and go ahead and check the book out to the student so that we can place it in the teacher's box. So I've got the next one, Lion versus Tiger. Typing in the patron's name and writing his teacher on here. He has Miss Pork. writing the teacher's name on the post-it so we have it ready to go to place in the teacher's box and I'm going to go ahead and check this book out to him and my last one here I'm going to type in the patron's name and I'm going to go ahead and get this book ready to check out for her and after I get all these ready, I'm going to go place them in the teacher's boxes so that these can oh be gosh. put into the hands of the students. Today we're setting up our book fair, which starts next week. I'm opening up the setup box here. Got some tablecloths we're putting on the table and some little um, display signs we're going to be getting out. And later today we're going to be getting all the shelves in position and setting up the displays on the table so they'll be ready for the student preview days tomorrow and Friday and the teacher preview tomorrow after school. I'm checking in some books to get ready for our class that's getting ready to come in. This one doesn't want to read the barcode. There it goes. And I'm going to pause for a minute and I'm going to let this student come over here because he wants he's ready to check out his book. What grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth. This is one of our fifth graders, and he can check out his own books. Thank you. He even got it ready for check-in again for me. And I'm just going to continue checking in all these books until I finish this bucket down here. Hi, we're setting up for the book fair today. So here's the table I've been working on. It's graphic novels and entertainment. We've just been pulling the books, it, books from the boxes. So go ahead and add another Pokemon to the table. Add it to the table here. And we got all the cases up and ready to go this morning. They sent three posters like this. We've started pulling three. up the back signs that go in the back. So I've been learning about the administrative side to having the book fair and how to set up and also how to reorder books whenever they're out of stock. So here's our book fair. So put your books over here. We're going to have some creative fun yeah. items here. And we're starting to set this up over here where we're going to have the cash registers. We'll also be using this table for the teacher preview tomorrow. Hi, we're at North Point Elementary and we've just gotten our book fair. We set it up today. And right now I'm going through the shelves and taking an inventory of what is there. And any books that we're seeing is a few titles and we have a low inventory, I'm using the Scholastic app 
to go ahead and place an order for some more of those books. So we've got one here and I'm using the app and I'm going to scan the barcode and it will come up where I can add it to my wish list. So I'm going to go ahead and add that one and there's another one over here. Okay, I've gone through the shelves and selected two titles to go ahead and order that we had a very low inventory of that we anticipate being good sellers here at our book fair. Okay, we've got our table set up for the teacher book fair preview. We're gonna be starting in about five minutes. These are the snacks we have for the teachers. We also have our thing over here that explains how to be entered into our drawing for a door prize and we're giving away some gift cards. We already have some teachers who've come by, who've been eligible to enter. And here we have some slips for some teacher book recommendations for books that are in the book fair. We actually already have a couple teachers who have made some book recommendations. Here's two right here. And this just kind of showcases the book and shows the teachers are recommending it. So it's, maybe it'll draw students towards the book. And we also labeled some with authors that were here I mean, that we Skyped with on World Read Aloud Day. So we have one here. And we're just getting ready to start up our teacher preview. This is where our teachers are putting their wish list, where parents can come in and see what teachers would like to have and possibly purchase books off their wish list. So we're having teachers fill out these wish lists while they're here today at the book fair preview. So this is our schedule. Um, you can see people come in as point, at point of need. In, in this library, they have four choices. They can be in the library classroom. They can sign up for the cooperative area, which has the TVs with cords that hook up to their one-to-one -one devices. They can come in for novel choice checkout, or they can come out for library hangout or maker groups and come bring their classes to the maker spaces um, if they want to. So those are four areas they can sign up for. When they sign up, I personally will highlight them yellow if it's a class I'm teaching. Um, and then if they're not highlighted, then it's somebody coming in for a different reason that doesn't need my 100% engagement um, that I can just assist with or whatever. We have people who come in. We have a slot for before school if anybody needs to sign up before school. We have a slot during lunch. During lunch, our library classroom is a um, study room, so it's a silent study area but sometimes clubs will meet in there. Um, and then we have slots for after school and a place for notes or assignments or whatever I might wanna do over here. Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, we just book it until it's full. Some days are very quiet, like right now, we have nobody scheduled on Wednesday or Thursday. That will change, because often people are signing up at the last minute. <laughs> But at the moment, we have no classes coming in on Wednesday and Thursday, so those are days we would focus more on cataloging books and things like that that we need to do that are hard to do when we have lots of people here. So, but we have, this is a Google form, or it's a Google Excel sheet, whatever they call it in Google, um, which I set up with tabs, one tab for each week of the school year. And then I put the school holidays in there, or um, my other responsibilities like this Friday, I'll be out at the Librarians as Leaders Academy and things like that. So there's, we put notes in there for people to see. So they can see what's going on when they sign up for a class, if it's a late arrival day or, or, if, or if it's a day off or whatever, because sometimes we all get bogged down and don't catch those things. So they're in the calendar too. Um, it's completely um, point of need at the high school level. There are no weekly classes or anything like that, like they do at lower levels questions These are like clear like high school library and all of their fiction books are genreified and she's even pulled out some of the non-fiction ones like memoirs and um, true stories and has pulled them to be genreified as well so I'm gonna walk over here to the realistic fiction section and all of 
these books here are realistic fiction. She's used some colored tape as an overlay to make them all match the color for realistic fiction. The books that have a cue on the label are quick reads, which means they're a shorter book. On all of the spines, she's put the realistic fiction, the genre, and she also puts the author's full last name on the spine labels to make it easier to shelve and easier for students to find books. Whenever she switched this library over to be genrefied, she replaced all of the spine labels on all of the books. Here's the graphic novel section. Again, completely genrefied. Here's the adventure section. And you can see here she's again got the color coded tape red for the adventure books and the author's full last name. There's also some signs around the library that advertises the ebooks that they have so that students know that this book is also available in an ebook format, that they can check that out. And some books even have a new book label that's showcased to help draw attention to the books. I'm still at Clear Lake High School, and I'm in the true nonfiction section, which is what I was talking about earlier. These are nonfiction books that she has pulled out of the nonfiction section into their own section that's genrefied. And on these books, she has kept the Dewey number, except changed the label to true, the Dewey number, and then the author's last name. So all of these still have their Dewey decimal numbers. She's just pulled them from the nonfiction section to make it easier for students to locate these true stories. I'm at Clear Lake High School and we've been discussing, the librarian, Mrs. Cook and I have been discussing um, advocating for an exemplary library program. This is a full spectrum laser um, that she's gonna be adding to Makerspace and it will laser images onto cardboard. This is something that um, she wrote a grant for and was able to purchase for her school after getting the grant. We have several maker spaces here in this library. One of them is a 3D printing, which was also purchased through a grant. And puzzles. Over here she has Lego, and at the high school level here, the kids are in and out of Makerspace all day long. And Mrs. Cook and I just went over budgets and different ways to get materials for your library. Um, she gave me some tips on grant writing, which I'm going to show here on her office, that she is a grant winner for the Clear Creek Education Foundation. One of the reasons the school district decided to send me to Mrs. Cook is because she is such a good grant writer and is very well versed in grant writing and usually is able to win the grants that she applies for. So she's been able to purchase some of this really neat stuff for the maker spaces here in her library and be an advocate for her library. and help make her library an exemplary experience for her students and staff. Okay. Tyler? Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's going to be due back March 19th, okay? There you go. Thank you. just learn how to do inventory using our circulation system. 
Destiny Follett, and I am doing inventory at the Realistic Fiction section. And it's telling me this item appears to be shelved incorrectly, so I'm going to take a look at the um, spine and see. And the reason this one is coming up incorrectly is because the one before it, they have labeled with an SC on there, and they told me that means story collection. And so I'm looking, and the last name for the story okay. collection then, is Beleza, so we said, uh, and we this one is Bella, so it is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. So let's just do the 50 and make like 50. So by next week, you need to have read, by, by Monday that's coming up, you need to have read 50 pages in your book, so you can answer the question that I'm going to ask you. And well, this is another one, same book. thing, book previous had a story collection label, and when I'm looking at the last names, it's Bennett, and this one is also Bennett, but they are in the correct order, so I'm going to proceed to finish this shelf. Collection. So I'm going to look at the one before it. The last name is Big, and the one I just scanned, the last name is Bird, so they are in the correct order okay, you. You with last names. Time. So I'm going to proceed. And I finished that shelf, so I'm going to go ahead and continue through the rest of the alphabet until I finish the realistic section here in the library. I'm at Clear Lake High School, and I am building a book order in Tidal Wave. Through some more line books. Reading the summary of the big book and the reviews. I decide if I should add this to my list. So far, I've added two series to complete that we have part of the books, and some new ones are coming out later in the spring. Looking for books that have at least two positive reviews per um, our district's guidelines. reading the reviews and trying to decide whether or not the book I think should be added to my list for this high school. I'm going to go back and take a look at the Prince Award winners. I'm going to go back and check another category. looking at award winners. And I did the Prince Awards and I'm now going to look at um, some Morris Award winners. And the book that I'm looking is for young adults, which that's already up there. And I'm looking 
can hear the screen and it's just um that the library already is up, so I know we can pass those up. Scroll down. A lot of these have already been purchased or on an existing list. So we'll go ahead and check another category here. And at the Newberry Winners now, the young adult, and here's one here, I'm going to click, and then we'll see what it's about, and so I'm just going to continue building my list and reading reviews and determining whether or not this is something we should put on our wish list. I'm here at Clear Lake High School and we just rearranged the sections. We moved all of these paranormal books and horror books. We completely switched the sections and moved all of the books because um, this is a brand new library and there was a visibility issue here in the library where these two chairs weren't able to be seen at the circulation desk and so now this has kind of been known as the love nook and so in order to do that and help with that situation we moved um, all of the horror books and paranormal and we just switched them because we have less horror books we were able to eliminate three shelves off the end here which increases the visibility of this section, which before had been hidden. So I loaded the books up on carts and switched them out and made sure everything was in order. And here they number the top of their books if it's a series. So I made sure all the series were in order and put the ebook labels in the corresponding places and got these two sections ready to go so that this area would be more visible to the circulation desk. Okay, we are um, getting books ready to make the spine labels. Scan all the books. All right, then you just gonna make sure you do this. We hit this, start a new line in every space. Then just hit run your report. Here's your spines. When you print, you're gonna make sure you print actual size. Uh huh. Is that? You're not going to shrink it or anything, so it'll fit on this um, label sheet. Put it in. And we're printing our spine labels for these books here on the cart. Okay, I'm getting the spine label on this book here. Sure. Can I put your number in there for you? Mm -hmm. Give me a label on the book. And this one's on the street, so we're going to use the color coded tape All right, you've got this for mysteries. Thank you. And use the thing to smooth it out. And this is our big fit night. It's Fit Body and Mind, which is our PE, music, 
literacy, math, science, technology, night, all of that combined in one. This is the bulletin board display that I designed. And it's going to be an interactive bulletin board. So people can take pictures in front of it and post their pictures on social media. So here's some of our props we have for the photo booth. And there's some frames I designed for this. And I put some on the ground. They're leading right into the book fair. And we also have a bunch of community members here. We've got some food trucks. We've got representatives from different karate schools, dance schools, um, hospitals, just all different kinds of members from the community here, school board members. What what are you researching? Cheetahs. Cheetahs. Okay, let's find cheetahs. And the cheetahs are going to be cheetahs right over here. Here. Okay, hold on. Somebody's looking at the shelf. What are you researching? Arctic fox. Okay, cheetahs are going to be on the shelf here. Oh, there's a. That looks like that has tigers and cheetahs. This is big cats. We can put your shelf marker in there. Are y'all all doing cheetahs? I'm not. I'm doing Adams. Adams. I'm doing World War Okay, let's take a look at this cheetah book and see. Big cats. Let's see if it has anything good about cheetahs in here. It can help you. Wait, look at the table of contents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's look at that and see. Oh, ah. oh it's over here. Yes. I think me. I am looking for dolphins. Dolphins? Your research is on dolphins? And I know you said Adams, right? Yeah. Okay, hold on just yes. a minute. Oh, I saw dolphins over here. Somewhere. Dolphins are going to be... These are... Hold on, this is fish and sharks, okay? Here's... Dolphins are fish. There's a dolphin one up there. This kind of fish, but it's actually a mammal. Okay. You can search up fish mammals. Yeah. Let's see. Dolphins. Oh, whales? Whales were like, I don't know. Whales would have been. I saw whales somewhere. And I know I saw. Oh, I found dolphins. It says whales and dolphins out Whales and dolphins. That's what I, that's what I Okay. I think I got it here. You think you got it here? So go ahead and put your shelf marker in and pull out a book and take a look at the table of contents. And take a peek through the book and see if it's going to help you with your research. Sorry. What do you think of that one? I think this one will be good. You think that one will be good? Good? Do you think that one looks too hard to read or you think you can read that one good? If I read my brother's books and he's in middle school, I think I can read this. Awesome. Okay. Atoms. 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 Combustion. Atoms. It's going to be in the sciences. I don't All right, let's go back over here. You're looking for combustion? Combustion. Would be chemistry. Is that a chemistry topic? Chemistry. Yeah, chemistry is right down there. Huey, Huey. This is, I don't know if we have anything on combustion. This is oh, um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at some analysis for our collection here in Tidal Wave. So I'm going to come down here. collection development and I'm going to go to our analysis and here it is and we were looking at this earlier and we saw that we are exemplary with our books here. So we've got 22.2 .2 books per student. And 
um, this report here is giving me a good overview of the collection. And when we were looking, we noticed um, some problems, small problems with our nonfiction section. And some of these sections have aged a little bit. So we decided to print out here uh, a section in the nonfiction that we noticed was really dated. And I'm going to go through these books on this list here and weed some of these out and kind of go from there and use this analysis to help us decide some of our sections that maybe we need to order some new books from for next school year. Okay, so here's the 200 section. And I'm going through this list here of books. These are books that we printed from our report showing that they haven't been circulated um, within the last three years. So I've pulled one, Bright and Beautiful Things, and um, looked through the book, and it's pretty new book and in very good condition. So I decided to go ahead and display that in hopes that maybe that will attract some attention to the book. And now I'm pulling another one that's on the list, David and Goliath, and I'm looking at the book, and I'm going to look at the publication date here. And this book is 2004, so it is a little bit older, it's a 14 year old book, um, but it is a Bible story, and the book is still in really good shape, so we can go ahead and keep this one. I'm going to go down to the next one, a book called Faith, Five Religions and What They Share. And again, this looks like a pretty neat book. It's in great condition. 2012. Still current and of interest to students, so this is going to be one I pull. Going to this one here. Bible Studies for Children. This is another one that hasn't been checked out in the last three years. And it is an older book. This one here is a 200 shelf, and I'm looking through some books that haven't been circulated in the last three years. And I pulled this one. And this book copyright is 1980, so this book is a lot older. It is a religion book. Um, but I'm going to put this one to the side for now and show this one to Mrs. May because the date of this book is aging our collection and we'll determine whether or not we're going to keep this book or this is going to be one we're going to weed. And I'm going to work my way through the shelf here and down this list here okay. to see if any so books are go. lost that need to be marked as lost or if there's any books that we feel need to be weeded based on using this statistical report that we've printed from the computer. Right now I'm processing holds and in interlibrary loans. I had a list here, pulled all of these holds, made a stack of the books, labeled them, and now I'm in Follett and I am checking these books out that I've pulled. These are for teachers to help with student research. So the books I'm doing right now are for books that are on for our school. And now, ten thirty. Okay, guys, we just Here are books that are going to other schools. So I'm going to check that down at the bottom down here. And this one here is a Stephen, Stephen Curry. So I'm going to click this one and scan this one. school in our district. So I am writing his name on this post-it and I'm writing the school where it's going to be sent to. And I'm going back in. I've got another one here. 
it's going to be sent to another school. Come down to the bottom of the screen. And I found it right here, Death Weavers. So I'm clicking on this here. This is going to Brookside Intermediate School. And I see down here that she asked for this haul, which I have. So I'm going to check this book out for her. This particular student has an overdue item, so I'm going to have to talk to Ms. May about this before I complete this transaction, because I'm not certain. Um, she has a book that was due October 10th, so I'm pretty sure we're going to deny this transaction. Um, so for now, I'm going to say no, I don't want to complete this transaction. And then after I talk to Mrs. May, I will um, will determine whether or not we're going to cancel her request. I've got one more here. I'm going to go ahead and complete. And it's down here. Dragon breath. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click that one and finish checking this out and prepping it to be sent to another school. I am in Interlibrary Loans here, and I've pulled all these books, and I noticed we have one down here, Five Kingdoms Dev Weavers, that's pending to be sent to another school, and whenever I went to go check that book out for her, it showed that she has an overdue book that's been due since October 10th, and so Miss May um, wanted me to decline her um, request and put that she has an overdue book from October and so we are not going to send that book to her at a different school because she has an overdue book. This morning I have some books that need to be cataloged so I'm here in our Fall at Destiny and I'm going to click add title grab the book here that I'm cataloging, Dog Man and Cat Kid, and I've clicked Add Title. Now I'm going to scan the ISBN number, and I notice here they have it in the district, so I'm going to do Copy Cataloging. I'm going to check this to make sure it matches the book that I'm holding in my hand, and I'm going to click Add Copies. I'm going to put in the barcode, I mean the call number. And enter the purchase price. The vendor was Scholastic. And the funding source for this book was our book fair. And I'm going to click Save Copies. And my copy's been added. And I'm going to go ahead and proceed and do cataloging for all of these books over here. All these books I have on the card here with me this morning. I'm going to be opening this box. And then the other books that are here. And then this one here, I'm going to have to do some original cataloging for. So I'm going to go ahead and get these materials cataloged. And then later the Today, I'm going to be making the barcodes and getting these processed and ready to go on the shelf. This morning, I'm cataloging some materials. So I'm here in our catalog. I'm going to click Add Title. I'm going to scan ISBN number. And I see here the book I'm looking at is listed. So I'm going to go ahead and click details and I'm going to look over this here and make sure and verify this is what I have, which it is. I'm now going to click add copies. I'm adding one copy, so I'm going to leave that the same. I'm going to assign the next barcode. This 
this is recommending this be an art book. I'm gonna find the purchase price, which is $16.99. We're supposed to bring that up to the next number. So we round it to 17 and then add a dollar here in our district. So that's $18. Um, my vendor is Scholastic, and the funding source for this one is our book fair. So I'm going to click Save Copies, and here I can see that it was added. So I'm going to click Add Title, and I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to catalog all of these books that are in the box here along with this book here. I'll finish these and later today I'm going to get these books processed with barcodes, print the barcodes, and get everything ready for them to be checked out. Um, I'm sending an email to third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers for a survey that I would like the third, fourth, and fifth grade students to do. So I've composed my email and I'm getting ready to send it. And I'm also going to be sending an email to the teachers, which I have a list here about a bulletin board that I've created in the lounge in order to promote reading among the staff, where the staff can do literature um, appreciation and do book recommendations for each other. Okay, I'm getting ready to print barcodes for the books I cataloged this morning. So I'm going to go to library reports and I'm going to go down here to labels and we're doing barcode labels and we need two barcodes for each two labels for each barcode and I need to select the date and time which will be today to today because these are the ones that I just did this morning. And I'm gonna go down. Okay, I have to go down here and change the printer onset, offset. So it's 10, and this one should be five. And we're gonna run the report. Okay, I'm stuck. Here are the printed barcode labels that I printed for the books that I cataloged this morning. And now I'm going back in and I'm getting ready to do the spine labels. So I'm in library reports and I'm going down here to spine pocket labels. And I'm gonna base them on the date and time added, which is today. I did all of these this morning. And I'm gonna go ahead and put two as today as well. So I only want the ones from today. Um, I need my printer offset 15 to 20. And I'm gonna start on label and I'm gonna count them because we always conserve 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So I'm going to start on label 34. And I'm going to run the report. And refresh the list. And I'm going to view, make sure everything looks good. Okay cataloged a big stack of books this morning. Here's a few of them. Um, I went through, printed the barcode labels for all the books, printed the spine code labels for all the books, and now I'm ready to go ahead and put the labels on the books. So the first one here, putting one label on the back.
putting the second label just inside the book. Right here, just inside the book. So I've got the barcode label just inside, barcode label on the back. And now I'm getting this um, spine label. Right here, putting it on the book. Right here. And I'm going to the next one, Dog Man and Cat Kid. Pulling off the barcode label. One on the back. One just on the inside. The inside cover here. And now I have to find the spine label. Special one, this is a graphic novel, so this one has graphic on the top because we have those pulled into a special section of our library. So I'm putting the spine label on. Moving on to the third one here, I Love Pete the Kitty. Getting my barcode labels. One's going to go on the back. One's going to go just on the inside. And spine label, which is right here. Put that on this book. And I'm going to continue working my way through the rest of the barcode labels and the rest of the spine labels until I finish all of these books and then get them ready for their next step before we put them on the shelves for kids to check out. Okay, I cataloged all of these books this morning. I printed the barcode labels, put them in place, printed the spine labels, put those in place. Now I'm doing the next stamp step, which is stamping the books with our school name. So one goes on the inside cover, and another goes on the title page. This one's ready to go. Go on to the next book here. Go on the inside cover. Going to the title page. Also, put some special labels on the books. Like this one's a blue bonnet book for next year. So put blue bonnet label on the spine. over here that I've already done the spine labels, the barcode label. I'm going to stamp these up. And these are going to go in a separate stack because they need mylar covers on them before we put them on the shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and finish stamping all these, get these books prepped to go on the shelf. This is a bulletin board that I created in the teacher's lounge for the staff to put book recommendations for each other. And I just put this up the other day. We've already gotten one in addition to mine up. Hopefully we'll have more teachers here sharing books that kind of have like a book club bulletin board for teachers. This morning I created a screencast to share with teachers about how to build a collection in Destiny Discover. So I used Screencast-O-Matic to create my screencast and I've published it to my YouTube page here and I'm going to be emailing the link to the YouTube to teachers so that they can um, 
use my screencast to help them learn and understand how to create a collection in Destiny Discover to help their students with research projects and find valuable information that's relevant to their topics using the resources and databases our school has. Okay guys, next time we meet, we're gonna be getting on the internet to do our book reviews. Today we wrote our book recommendations for our book, and I'm gonna borrow yours real quick. We've written our book recommendations and we're going to get on an app called Flipgrid. And we're gonna use that to make videos of our book reviews. And one of the things that's really, really important about getting online is knowing how to be a good digital citizen. Do y'all know what that means? Yeah, no. no. Yes. Um, it means that you are going to be responsible when you use the technology. So when we come on Thursday morning, we're only going to be using the technology to get on Flipgrid and make our book reviews. We're also going to use it in a positive way. So no cyberbullying. Have y'all heard of cyberbullying before? No. And th that's when, you know how there's bullies in your classroom? Yes. Yeah. Well, cyberbullying is when somebody's bullying you on the internet. And so we know that's wrong. And if we ever see cyberbullying when we're online, we always go tell an adult. Another thing we need to remember is we treat others with respect when we're online. Just like we do, just like we do all the time. Um, if you're on the bus, then you tell the uh, yeah, that's right. The on the bus we also on the need to be safe when we're online. So we only go to websites and web pages that our mom and dad have said that it's okay for us to look at. And if they tell, if they said, hey, Christopher, you're not allowed to go to this website, should you do that? Nah. No, you need to listen to mom and dad. And then another one that's really, really important is to keep your private information private, like your login for Dreambox. Are you supposed to tell your friends your login? No. No, you're supposed to keep that private, just like any passwords you have. Does anybody have anything else they'd like to say? No. Olivia. Um, never respond to a bully. Okay. Emma Joy? Um, my mom and dad let my brother um, text people that he knows. Yes, you only text people that you know. That's being a very responsible digital citizen. Yes, always Anna. Always push um, say something safe so you know you can't um, bother anybody on a video game you're playing. Okay, good. Saad? What's the website again? A website. That's where we're going to enter in an address on the computer, and it's going to bring us to a web page. And ours is going to be Flipgrid because that's where we're going to make our videos. Yes, Christopher? I got to go on the calculator. Okay, good. Go okay, Elise? Never give something any information that your parents said not to share. Oh my goodness, that was so good. And that's being safe when you're online, and that's super important. You never give anybody your information, your private information your that you passwords. don't know. All right, so is everybody ready to make their videos on Thursday? Yeah! Hey, we have a book here that's been chewed. So I've just learned how to repair this. So one of these. So first thing I'm going to do is peel the center. Smooth this down. Line that up. Okay. I'm going to peel an edge. Pages. That. So I've got this one. Come here to the back. Get this one. I'm going to smooth it out a little bit more. And we've repaired this as good as we can. Okay, we have a big Nate book here, completely fallen, fallen apart. So we're going to be using the toaster to 
fix this book, first thing I need to do is measure how wide I need my glue to be. And I've been taught it needs to be about half the width. So I'm going to cut this here. I'm going to stick my first piece in. And then this one, I'm going to have to cut a little. Close this up. Wait for the toaster. We've got another book toasting right now. We've got a basket of book repairs today. Here is our toaster. Right here. We've got a book toasting in there right now. And this one is done. We're gonna set that one to cool. We'll get Big Nate, double check our glue. Straighten them up. Get Big Nate in the wax paper. with the wax paper ready to go in the toaster. Set it up. And he's in there toasting for three minutes. And then at 10 and minutes then after it's done. Done. Then we're going to sit it to cool down, and after 10 minutes it'll be done, and we'll um, move on to the next book. Hi, this morning I'm putting some Mylar covers on books. I've already done this one here. So I'm going to work on this one now. First thing I'm going to do is take the cover off the book. Smooth it out flat. I need it is. It's nice and flat. Okay. Let's see what I need to cut. I'm going to cut it here to cut it. Line that up. Check one more time to make sure I'm leaving enough. Get this put on the box. Put the and the and I'm going to put it on the going to use my smoother here. Smooth this, make sure I have a really good fold. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Bye. And now, I've got the cover on. So I'm going to tape it.
the tape and this book will be ready to go. And this book is finished, ready to go on the shelf. Here in the library, we're responsible for a bunch of schedules. Um, in this binder here, we've got our school calendar. And then we have a year at a glance, which shows the school year, all the important things happening, book fair, star test week. We also put whenever we have maker weeks, um, breaks from school, Texas two by two voting, so that we can keep track of our, um, you know, our year whenever we're planning. We have a library schedule here that's week A, which is third through fifth. And then behind it, we have some of the fifth grade um, actual class schedules to kind of keep up of when they switch class periods. And then we have a week B schedule, which is grades kindergarten through second. We also keep our schedule for the week here on this clipboard right behind the circulation desk. And this is in the hallway as well. And also right next to the teacher's boxes in the workroom so that they know what's going on in the library. And obviously we shift things around as needed. We keep Friday kind of open for teachers to come in and use the library as needed. Maybe they need a research lesson on databases. So we kind of keep that time set aside for that as well as some of these open times that we have. This week you can see we've got field day coming so we've allowed that in our schedule and shifted some people around. We also have a schedule for our library leaders which are fifth graders who come and help in the library um, before school, after school, during recess. They help shelf books, check in books, and they've got some specific duties that they do. We also have a parent volunteer schedule. We've got a lot of parent involvement here in our library, and so we um, have a schedule of when the parent volunteers come and who, who we should be expecting to come up to the library that day. And we've had to create some schedules for like our book fair preview for the teachers to bring their classes in and other special events like whenever they've done pictures in the library and we've had to shift the library schedule around. So this is something that's really important is having that time management and having a very organized schedule so that we can keep up with um, all the classes, teachers, parent volunteers, and library leaders we here have here at North Point. Hey Olivia! You look like you're looking for something. What kind of book are you looking for? A fiction or a nonfiction? Cats. Cats. Are you looking for a book you can learn something from? So a nonfiction book? Are y'all doing an all about, all about something book in your class? Mm -hmm. And you need a book about cats for research? I don't think what kind of What kind of cats are you looking for? Because here's the cat section Yay. right here. Do you want one about... Persian cats, or here's another Persian cat that's an orange one. What about this cat? Look at this one. Oriental cats. What do you think of that cat? Wow, that looks silly. Mm -hmm. Do you see one that looks kind of this interesting one, to you? One, okay, why don't you put your shelf marker and take a look at it and see if you think that one will help you with your research. You need to see if it's a just right book for you. Was that a just right book for you? Yeah. Or you think it's a little too hard? There's a lot of words. There's a lot there. of words, okay. Yeah. Well, you're so good about knowing if it's a just right book or not. Oh, cats special, is that what Cat it's Cats speak? They don't. You wanna look at cat don't. speak? They don't even speak. Oh, this book says it's about the way cats act and why they do things they do. What do you oh think? Oh my god. Is that a little, is that a just right book or you think that one's too hard? That has a lot of many That words. does have a lot of words. Do you see one? That that one. Let's try this one. Oh, that's a cute kitty. Okay. I hope this one doesn't have a lot of words. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, what do you, oh, yeah, that's good. What do you think about this one? Does that look like a good one? Do you think this will help you with your research? Yeah. 
Hi, Olivia. Today you're going to learn how to check out your own library books. Okay? So the first thing you always do is go to the reset barcode. So can you scan that one? And then you're going to go to checkout. And then what do you think you're going to do next? Scan the books. Scan your barcode. Can you scan that? Good. Now what are you going to do? Find your barcodes on your book. Can you scan your barcodes? Oh, is that showing that book is checked out to you now? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead and do this one. Do Pink Alicious. Does it say Pink Alicious is checked out to you now? Yeah. All right, so now you've checked out your books. Now the last thing you need to do is do the reset button. That way nobody else is able to see your private library information. Okay, Olivia, you have a nice day. Enjoy re reading your books. Good day. Today, um, our first grade book club created videos of book reviews of their favorite book. They use Flipgrid. These are two students here looking at the videos that they created today. This is our last day of book club, so this was our culminating activity. The kids wrote a book review and then recorded a short video that went on to our um, flip grid for top <laughs> picks from our book club. I'm in my flip grid account where my book club has created their book reviews and I'm printing their QR codes so that we can display these and they can be scanned to link right to their book review. So I'm going to click share, QR code, and I'm going to download it and print it and get these hung up for the kids. This is the bulletin board that I designed for my first grade book club. Um, we created book review videos using Flipgrid and printed the QR codes so that people can come and scan the QR codes and see the kids' videos and book recommendations. Prior to um, using Flipgrid, we talked about being good digital citizens and using the internet responsibly and I also sent home a note to parents to get permission for the kids' photos to be used as well as having their video on Flipgrid being made public with the QR code so that others can access it. Hi, I'm just um, writing up our library newsletter and putting all of our March news into our S'more newsletter for our school.